Um, this right here was back in um, between early 2010 and mid 2010. It was me and my son and uh, Kenneth and a guy named David. And we were sitting right here and it was around 10.30 at night, had the fire going and nothing's changed. This spot looks just like it did then. Nothing's changed. And um, about 10.30, back over in that direction which would uh, be uh, campsite number five it's right around the corner mm -hmm. we hear just one just one heavy wood knock and I'm assuming you guys were the only ones here yeah there was nobody else there. Okay. nobody right and uh, nobody else was here nobody else came in the entire night so we heard that and you know it's kind of played all because that's that's normal I hear you hear wood knocks all the time so the only thing that's different is that picnic bench right there was kind of one of the old wooden ones, and it was sitting basically like right here at that time. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's a new one. So, Ken is right over here with David, and me and my son are standing right here. And uh, Ken had this night vision. At that time, I had night vision too. I didn't have the flare thermal like I do now. So, and I told Ken, I said, I'm gonna walk back to my truck, and my truck was sitting down there, right down there in number 10. Mm -hmm. And basically, I'd walk you down and show you where that. Um, my truck was sitting down here. <clears throat> my truck was sitting right there in number 10, which that picnic bench is at. Okay. And when I got right about between them two trees right there, it was almost just like I hit a wall. I mean, mm -hmm. literally, it's like something just said, stop. Yep. So, as I was standing there, I knew I could feel there was something out here. I could, I could just feel it. So, Ken hollered down here to me because I'd been standing here for about a minute and it was pitch black. And a lot of people don't understand. When I say you can't see your hand in front of your face down here some nights, I mean, you, you can't even see the tree. It's, it's pitch black. I couldn't even see you. Mm -hmm. So, I'm standing here and I kept trying to ease my way down. And like I said, my truck was parked right there. Right there. And um, I kept easing down. I was like, wait a minute. I said, something, something just don't feel right about this. I said, there's something out here. And truthfully, <laughs> I wouldn't even think about a Bigfoot. I was thinking cougar or bear because that's that's what it, that's exactly what it felt like. Right. So, and do you Ken, have, do you and have Ken, cougar and bear out here? Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, we actually saw a black bear a while back. But oh. yeah, cougars are down here. So, um, sorry about that. They're cutting the grass. Yeah, no. That's... And, uh. So Ken hauled down. He said, man, he said, what's taking so long? I said, just hold on, dude. I said, there's something <laughs> down here. And he said, what do you mean? I said, there's something out here, man. So I walked over to my truck, opened my door, got the uh, the uh, night vision out, and I was putting batteries in it. And I kept looking around the whole time. I was like, God, I just I couldn't shake that feeling. I mean, it literally was like something on you. Mm. So I turned around, and we walked back up here. And I was walking up here. I kept looking back. You know, I kept looking back and didn't see nothing. And then when I got up here, then we got back up here, Ken was like, he said, what took you so long? And I said, dude, I said, there's, there's something down there. He said, what do you mean? I said, man, there's something down there. Mm -hmm. And he said, did you see anything? And I said, no. I said, I didn't have to see it, man. I said, I, I can feel it. And I said, there's something down there. Yeah. So he walks, he gets his night vision. And he's standing here looking. He doesn't see anything. And I'm standing here looking, don't see anything. And like I said, that picnic bench was sitting basically right here, where this right here is. So, probably, I don't know, maybe close to an hour go by. And we're standing at the fire, and my son is standing here, exactly right here, with the parabolic dish. And he's 27 now, so it's been a while back. He's standing here with a parabolic dish. He's standing like right here. <laughs> Never fails. And all of a sudden he goes, and all of a sudden he goes, like that. And I saw him, and he didn't say anything. He was doing like that, and he goes, like that. And I looked at him, I looked at Ken, and I said, he hears something. And Joe didn't say anything, his name's Joe. And he's standing like that again. He went, oh, do, do, like that. And I said, what? He goes, come here, come here. So I walked over here. He said, listen, listen. 
So I put the thing in my ear, and he's standing there listening. I didn't hear anything at first. All I could hear was the sound of crickets. And I said, what? He goes, just listen. He said, there's something breathing down there. I said, what? He said, dude, I can hear breathing. Mm. So I'm standing there listening. Still don't hear anything. So a few minutes back, and I said, okay. So I get back to him. I didn't hear anything. So I walk back over there. And about probably 15 minutes later, he just, he's standing right here. And he's like, he said, come here, come here, come here. So I come back over here. <laughs> put it back in my ear. And just as soon as I put it back in my ear, straight ahead, right down through there, I hear. And I'm like, oh, my God. Yeah. And dude, he went, you hear that? And I said, yeah. And it was almost like. It almost sounded like somebody had asthma is what it sounded like. Because it's like oh, they're trying to okay. get the deal. They're like trying to get They're like. <laughs> wow. That's all I could hear. Yeah. First thing went through my head again, bear. And I thought, oh, my God, there is a bear down there. That's what I heard. Mm-hmm. But then it just quit. And I looked at Ken. I said, Ken, come here, come here, come here. I said, dude, I said, there is something down there. So he comes over. He takes a pair of ball dish my son. Puts the earplugs in. He's staring. He walks over this direction. He gets right back here. He's listening. He'll go back over here. And he goes back over here. He's staring off. Sudden, he's like, "Oh my God!" I said, "What?" He goes, "Dude, there's something just." He said, "There was a loud grunt down there." I said, "Damn, is there something down there?" So David walks over, and David doesn't really believe. And I've only met David uh, twice, and that's it. Mm -hmm. So David comes over here, and he's listening. He's like, "Oh my God!" He said, "What is that?" And I said, "I don't know." I said, "But I told y'all." I said, "There's something down there." And I still, I was still thinking bear, bear, bear is what I was thinking. So. Ken says, hold on. He goes over there and he gets his uh, night vision. He walks over and like I said, the picnic bench was right there. So he walks over and he sits down on the picnic bench. And he's sitting there looking, looking, looking. And I walk back over here to the fire with David and Joe. And the whole time, Joe's still standing there with a pair of bottom dish listening, listening. And Ken's like, do you hear anything? And Joe's like, yeah. He said, I can still hear it breathing, man. He said, it's still down there. Excuse me. So Ken's still sitting there. And all of a sudden, this probably maybe 30 35 minutes went by excuse me and all of a sudden ken goes oh my god and i said what he goes dude he said come here come here i said what he said come here so i walk over here and he goes get your night vision i said all right so i got my night vision and he said right down there he said where that big tree is and i'll show you i'll show you where it's at This was the the second time that I've ever actually had a sighting. The first time when I was I was 10 years old with my dad. Mm -hmm. and that's the first time I had a sighting. Oh wow! This was the first time that I'd ever had a sighting of a female, and I'll tell you why in a minute. Why we knew it was a female. But right down here. This tree right here. That big tree right there. Mm -hmm. But during that time, this was during the summer. So all this was covered up in foliage. I okay. mean, you had this big tree and nothing but big green bushes. And right there is where we were. Ken said, look, look, look. So I got to looking with the night vision. But like I said, we were up there and we were looking right here at this tree. But like I said, all this was covered in green. So you couldn't see between it. Right. But you could see the tree. I looked down here, I didn't see anything, okay? So I kept studying there looking, and if most people know how night vision works like flare. You open my eye, you can't see nothing. You're yeah. blind in one eye for yep. a minute. So I switched night eye, and I told him, I said, Ken, I said, I don't see anything. He's like, dude, he said, I just saw something. Look out behind that tree. He said, I saw the eye. I said, really? He said, yes, sir. So I said, all right, so if you let me see it, let me know. So I go back over there <clears throat> where the fire's at, and I'm standing there, and I've been standing there maybe five ten minutes and he's like lady get back over here so here it is again I said, all right so <laughs> you're very come. active that night oh, you, were, was, you yeah. were all over <laughs> yeah i was like, back and forth, like a ball bouncing so, <laughs> but it was a good night i mean it was a good night and so i walked over back over there and i grabbed my night vision and i'll be honest with you when i when he told me to come back over there i thought well i'm gonna look up again i ain't gonna see nothing i was wrong so when I walked back over there, and he's sitting out at the bench, and I got right above his shoulder. He said, get right here behind me and look straight down at that tree right there. That's all right. So I looked at the night vision, and just as soon as I picked that night vision up, 
that tree right there, her head, I can't reach it, was way up there. Wow. Oh, yeah. Yes. She, she was a big girl. She's a big girl. She's thick. I feel like that. She's thick. And what I saw was there was a head leaned out. You could see, like, the head and this shoulder. It was leaned up behind a tree like that. And just as soon as I saw it, I was like, oh, my God. Ken said, dude, I told you. Mm. He said, that thing is standing there looking right dead at us. And you could see the eyeball. That was one thing that I noticed right off the bat. Because through my night vision, it was kind of a greenish gray look. So yeah. her eye was showing up green. And her eye was as big around as that lens right there on your camera. That's mm. the God's honest truth at that distance. Wow. She was there. And then I stood and looked at her for maybe 20 <laughs> or 30 seconds. And she went back behind the tree. And then she went to the other side. She leaned up on the other side. Mm -hmm. and then she came back to this side, and she was going from one side to the other, leaning out. But every time she leaned out, you see just a little bit more of her. Okay. So then we sat there and looked at her for probably a good 25 minutes, if Holy not longer. Crap. Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. And all she would do is she would, she would lean out. She'd go behind a tree for maybe a minute or two. She'd come out to the other side. And then she'd come out, and she'd wait a few minutes. She'd come out to the other side. But she, that's all she would do. Mm -hmm. And every time she'd come out, you could see that big cone-shaped head, a shoulder, and you could see that eyeball. Then what she did was, and me and Kim both saw this. Now, I wish he was here, he'd tell you so. She leaned out, but when she leaned out, like I said, I mean, you imagine her head's way up here. Yeah. So when she leaned out, this time, instead of like leaning out like this, she came out and she turned like this right here. She turned real slow. And that's when we could see it was a female because you could see the breast. Right. It turned like this right here. She turned. She done like this and she stopped. And she kind of turned back like that. Never like looking at us. But because you never saw the eye. Mm -hmm. But she kind of turned like that like she was looking at the ground. And she turned. And we watched her walk from right there. She went straight through here. We saw her go right through here. She went right between this tree, that tree, and when she hit that tree, she cut back and she went down that way. Wow. And we saw her clear as a bell, man. Mm. Clear as a bell. And what was weird about that was I've always told people, where there's one, there's two, where there's two, there's three, and that is a fact. They never are alone. So just as soon as we saw her walk off, no sooner, I'm talking, no sooner she got out of view, right back down to number five, Two hits on a wood knock. Oh wow! It was like they were letting them know she was leaving the area. Yeah. And that that is so weird, but that's the God's honest truth, man. Wow. So, and that happened right there. That was back, like I said, between the first of 2010, between January and February of April. So, no, it probably had to be January because it was still cold. But I mean, there was like the no one actually that was 2010 because there was foliage on the trees. So that was that had to be probably between April and June. Yeah. Yeah, about mid, about mid, because like I said, there was foliage on trees. It didn't look like it was right now. Right, so, right. Yeah. Huh. So, but this is, this right here has always been an active area. A lot of everything that I've had happen when it comes to Bigfoot, Sasquatch, whatever you want to call it, has happened right here. Mm -hmm. Number 10 is where me and Sam, he's ex-military. I call him Sam, I am. <laughs> that is, yeah. He has had a lot of good experiences. We act, That's the second time we actually saw one was standing right here in this campsite. We were back. Okay. Okay. Yo, I've told I've told this story. I don't know how many times now. Sam, had, uh, he used to work with me. We we own our own coffee business. Oh, okay. So Sam used to work with me, but well, not in the coffee business. Back when I was working with a, for a factory, and um, he kept wanting to come down here and you know do the do the research thing because he didn't really want to believe. It. So. The first time I brought him down here, we came in right here, and <laughs> I never did. Sam, it didn't take much scaring. Even though he was in the military, <laughs> it didn't take much scaring. The first night I brought him down here, and this literally we were doing nothing, man. This was no lie. We had two chairs set up right here, and it had rained a couple of days prior, and it was foggy. Oh my God, it was, it was foggy, man. You could all thing you could see was like. And the trees were like somebody had took a black marker and just done like that. That's all you could see. I mean, you could not see passing trees. Wow. So we were standing right here, sitting right there. 
and all of a sudden we heard movement on the left-hand side. And uh, Sam said, dude, it sounds like something walking. Yeah, it does. And then it would stop. And it would start again. And then it would stop. And like I said, you couldn't, I mean, you couldn't even see the fire room, man. It was like a cloud had set down. And you couldn't see nothing at it. And then all of a sudden, we sat here at probably 5, 5.30 in the morning. And then probably about, I'd say, 3.30, quarter to 4, something like that. From the left to the right, we heard something walk from over there, right down there. Keep going, keep walking, and keep walking until, until you couldn't hear it no more. Mm -hmm. And uh, Sam was like, man, he said, that is, that's something walking. I said, I know. He said, ain't no deer. He said, there's a footprint. I said, I know. Because you could hear it when it would walk. It would do that little, like, never, never heard no noise. Like, it didn't make no noise. But you could hear that, like, that's what you were hearing. Yeah. And, I mean, that was clear as a bell. It wasn't a deer. Right. It was a stride. Mm hmm So, that happened with Sam. And then the second time, Sam had an encounter with what I called the, 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 man, the old man of the forest. Uh, I'll tell you about that in a little while. But, we were set up right here, and it had been raining for, now it rained for like three days. And Sam kept saying, I want to go back out there, I want to go back out there. I said, that's fine. And this is the, the last time he came back here, it scared him so bad. And I ain't gonna lie to you, I've never really been, like, scared of this thing, of this creature or whatever. But that night, I can actually say that it was like an adrenaline rush, to the point where your heart felt like going to come out of his chest, and that's no lie. Right. Not scared, but it's just like you were panicking. Mm -hmm. Because I didn't have, didn't have the weapon on me. <laughs> we were sitting right here in the campsite. Yeah. I was back then, right here. I had my truck back then because he rode with me. And my truck was sitting right there. And we had a tarp who's from deep full of trees right there. Mm -hmm. We had a tarp on top. And we had brushed it in. You couldn't even, I mean, when it got dark, two cars came through. And with the car like you couldn't even tell nothing here. But that's the way it was. Right. So me and Sam had been in here and stayed in this thing for like two days straight. All the time we leave, the base just bad. We didn't go nowhere because it was, it was pouring down. Right? Yeah, you right. You couldn't hear nothing, couldn't see nothing. But we had a little bitty hole just big enough so we could see out through through the night vision. Okay. Cut out. And it was aimed right there. But what we did too was we were just doing just to see something happening. We was not expecting it. We had a tent set up. That's interesting. But anyway, we had our tent set up right here. Just one little tent. And we'd done that just to see if anything would come up. Yeah, dummy tent type thing. Dummy tent. Yeah. Testing the water. So, we're in here. And like I said, for two days we had rain like cats and dogs, man. Airplane was soaking wet. And this happened on a Saturday night. I had the parabolic dish hooked to this tree right here. Because I was sitting right here had the dish up here and the top of the tarp was right about up in here we had to stretch as far as we get and sam is sitting basically right here from me and like that had a hole here had a hole there we were just passing night vision back and forth <coughs> excuse me and i'll be honest with you if i had wanted to kill one i could have got it that night it had been the end of it wow because we were no further than here that tent when it came well i think so. anyway so we're sitting here and I'm listening through the parabolic dish. And if anybody tell you, when it comes to a parabolic dish, whatever I'm listening to, I can't hear what's going on over here. If it's aimed that way, that's yeah. what I hear. Yep. So, Sam, he's sitting right there. And all of a sudden, he reaches and he nudges me. And I said, what? He goes, dude, he said, there's something walking. And I was like, I don't hear anything. He said, which way is the, the dish aimed? And I said, the dish is aimed that way. He said, no. He said, there's something over there walking. Mm -hmm. He said, I can hear it. I said, okay. So I couldn't reach up and hook the dish because we had it strapped up there, so I couldn't turn it. Yeah. So I started listening again. And probably, I don't know, maybe a good, probably 40, 45 minutes away. And all of a sudden, he starts nudging real hard. He said, dude, he said, there's something coming. I said, what? He said, there's something coming. And the only way I can describe it, like I said, I've told this story how many times, if it's some of the little lectures and conferences I've been to. It sounded like King Kong coming through that forest. That's, that's no lie, dude. 
because it started off with like real light branches, just and then like and they got real like it was mm. breaking them left and right. Man, it was heavy. It was stomping its feet, dude. It was coming through there like it didn't have a care in the world. Mm -hmm. Now, actually, truth, it almost sounded like an elephant coming through. And that's in God's own truth. So we didn't see anything at the time, but what we heard was something come right through there, and I can't I can't stomp the I can't stomp the ground hard enough. I mean, it was louder than that coming through. Here. Yeah. He came through. <coughs> he walked right through here, and like he have a care in the world about that tent. And Sam had the night vision. And he's like, dude, I'm trying to look. He said, I don't see it. I don't see it. I can't see it. And I'm like, what do you mean you can't see it? We can hear it. He's like, I can't see it. We heard it go through here. It walked, went through there, kept on going. And we thought we thought it was over. <laughs> yeah. No, that was just the beginning. So, and Sam, by that time, Sam done scoot it over to me. So, <laughs> I never forget. Sam had sharpened a big old stick. He had a stick like that long. He sharpened like a toothpick. He said, man, I said, and, that <laughs> and he was sitting, he was just quivering. And I, I said, man, I said, be careful. I said, he said, well, if anything comes through the tarp, I'm going to stick it. I said, but just watch me. Cause like I said, it was pitch black. So we couldn't see each other. That's how dark it is. So, like I said, we're sitting there. And about probably 20, 20 25 minutes go by. And all of a sudden, <laughs> where I'm sitting at, I hear this right here. I'll, I'll never forget this sound because it sounded like something very, very heavy with heavy padded feet when it was walking on the ground. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I can do it, but I hear something like... And I'm like, oh my God. And it was coming up behind us. Mm -hmm. It comes right up through here, and all you hear is... And it gets right here and goes... Oh, right. man. And it stomped its foot right there. And I literally, <laughs> yeah, I'm no lie, dude. I'm literally, I wish Sam, I've told this story how many times that I keep telling I wish Sam was here to tell you because, <laughs> dude, he was panicking. Yeah. He was, he, he already suffered from um, PSD and this, that, and the other. So he was, yeah. he was about to freak out on me. And I mean, literally, he was about to lose it real quick. It walked up, and when it got right here, beside this tree, it was going, <clears throat> Like it could not breathe. Hmm. And Sam, <laughs> like this, Sam started right here. And he was sitting right up against me by then. <laughs> he was touching mine. He went. He was just a quiver, man. He was just a quiver. And when I leaned over and I whispered, I said, "Man, gotta calm down." <laughs> like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm scared he was going to flip out. He was going to try to do something. Yeah. He didn't. So <laughs> I wish he was here to tell you. So we hear this thing right here beside us, right? Okay. It's right here. And like I said, and the tarp is the tarp is right here. And all of a sudden, like I said, you can't see nothing. It's pitch black. You hear the sound of the tarp being pushed. Oh like, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, he's he's messing with the tarp. And Sam leaned over. He said, "Dude, see if he's pushing his foot, I can get over the tarp." And I'm sticking. And I said, "Don't do this." And I said, you can't see me don't start sticking <laughs> so but anyway so he gets right here and you can see that you can hear the tarp being pushed you can't see it but you can hear that sound of that tarp being messed with it's like all right so then all of a sudden it walks it takes off walking and it gets down here to where the tent's at and i'm i told sam i said let me see the night vision so excuse me so he gets i take the night vision and i'm sitting there looking and I'm looking, looking, I'm like, why can't I see this thing? So I saying, and I still couldn't see it. Mm. And Sam's like, I said, dude, I said, I can't see it. Where's it at? So all of a sudden, I don't know where it went when it walked down, because I thought it was right here at the tent. So, like I said, the tent is sitting right here. All of a sudden, I gave Sam the uh, night vision. And Sam's sitting, looking, looking, he goes, oh my God. That's what he goes. Oh my God, that's all he said. And I said, what? And he goes, dude, it's right there. It's standing right in front of us. I was like, what? And he goes, it's standing right there in front of us. Mm. So he was wishing he was saying that loud. And I was like, let me have it. He's like, so I didn't, he said, just, he held it there. So I just kind of leaned over where he's at. And I was looking with my left eye, and I was like, oh my God. And dude, it's no, it's no lie. The tent was here, right here. 
this thing, and I mean, we're right there. Yeah. This thing was standing right here next to the tent. And the one thing that I've told people, and I'll say it again, the one thing that I will never forget is the way that it looked and the way that it moved. If you look at the old, uh, the Legend of Boggy Creek poster, where mm -hmm. he's kind of like down like this, yeah. In position, yep. That's the way this thing was standing. I don't know if this, because he had his back to us, so it had to be this shoulder right here. I don't know if the shoulder had been broke or it was dislocated, but his shoulder was cocked way up in the air, like that, and he was standing just like this. Wow. I'll never forget that. That's crazy. Yeah, it, it was creepy. Yeah, man. that's, that's. And like I said, through the night vision, he was kind of a, he was kind of a greenish gray look, like I said, that's night vision. Mm. So, and he was standing there, but one thing he was doing is he was twitching. He was jerking. Like mm. I, said, I don't know if he had nerve damage. And like, I, mean, I thought about that for weeks and weeks, and I went back to work with Sam, me and him talked about that. He said, man, he said, I, he said, that thing has burnt an image in my head. He said, I cannot get that. I said, I know, dude. I, I thought about it for weeks. And it stood here. It was standing. Like I said, it had arms shut up here like this. And, there, and it was just, the whole body was just wow. and shaking, man. Mm. Like I said, like it was having DTs, basically. Yeah, jeez. And it stood there. And then it started moving. It never turned. It never turned to look at us. Not one time. Not one time. It had, it was probably... I'm gonna say a good seven foot. He wasn't—he wasn't real big. I mean, he wasn't real big and bulky. He had wide shoulders, but he was slim looking, mm -hmm. real kind of skinny looking. But he did—he had wide shoulders. He, I mean, he had the looks like all of them. Well, not all of them. But most of them. He had the wide shoulder. He had the wide shoulders, no neck, big head like this. But he, like I said, he was cocked up like this. Mm -hmm. You could tell he was slim, especially when he turned sideways. He—I mean, there was like the midsection there was nothing to it. He wasn't wide. He was thin. -looking. Yeah, but he had the big leg. I mean, the long legs. But he was standing like when he turned sideways. You could see his legs were like this. Mm. That's why he was standing. He just cocked like that right there. But wow. he had long, shaggy-looking matted hair on him. Because when he would turn, you could see the hair move. But it was kind of matted, looking like a wet dog. Mm. So like I said, when he turned, he never looked at us. Not one time he never turned his head and looked at us. He kind of turned like that, and then he went around the tent, just like this right here. He went around it several times, and when he would go around, he'd go, Bruh! and he was oh, hitting the man. tent. No lie. He was hitting that tent, and he hit it like he hit it once on each side. But like I said, when he would go around, he wouldn't raise his head. He had his head down like right here the whole time looking down. Wow. And he'd go around, Bruh! and he would hit that tent. And then when he got to the back side, he stopped, and he kind of turned. And when he turned, he was standing, there, and he was going like this, one side the other. But he was jerking the whole time, man. <laughs> Huh. Oh God, it's, it's creepy, man. I didn't even think about it now. Yeah. And like I said, he turned and he stopped. He stood there, and then he turned himself like this way and looked, and he let out this god awful scream, man. Mm. And he took right off and ran right down through there. <laughs> wow. Sam, by this time he was, he was, he was freaking out, man. I mean, he was freaking. I don't lie, my heart felt like it was gonna come out. <laughs> like that. Plus, I had a weapon on me. So, Sam, he basically. He jumped up and he crawled in the back of my bed, my truck, and he opened the back window and he crawled through the back window went in the back Oh, window. wow. Oh, yeah, he, he was scared. Of it. He was scared. Jeez. So, we stayed here the rest of the night. And about probably 4.30 in the morning, we got back out because we thought, you know, it was clear up and he was gone. So, about 4.30 in the morning, we got back out of the truck and we sat on the tailgate. We didn't get out of the tarp, though. We sat on the tailgate. And we could hear movement down in there. And we, what you hear was just something like. Mm. So I saw old Sam. I said, he's still here. Dude. I said, we can get out of the tarp. He's still here. And he was down to walk around. And he, you could hear him go to the left. He'd come this way. He'd walk up that way. And he'd stop. He'd stay for a few minutes. And then you could just hear him walk back forth. And for probably a good, I don't know, maybe a good 25, 30 minutes. He was pacing, man. He would walk from side to side. Yeah. And then you could just hear him. He just, just wandered off. Wow. Yeah, and that happened right here, right here in this campsite. And I've had people say, oh, you know, to have an encounter, you've got to go. No, that's... Ah, Tim, I'll no. Make, no, you don't need Yeah, thing. no, that's the thing. No, you don't. Yep. This right here has been one of the most active areas. Well, this and Reservation Road has been one of the most active areas I've been in. 
because either here or up on the hiking trail back to what I call the pine thicket and down to the fern forest which <laughs> me and two other guys kind of believe that the pine thicket in the fern forest as a crow flies if you're going through the forest it's literally there they run right into each other right and we kind of believe that's where they're staying at that's that's where the oh, main, okay. that's their main area to stay at yeah uh, that and also coming up from spencer creek because like i said i've had i've had so much stuff happen in this entire area man i, mean, I could write a book just the stuff we've had right i'm now. sure yeah. Oh, yeah wow so uh but it's that's awesome yeah, it's, 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 those are two really cool encounters i'll do this here there's a house up the road but there's there's no dogs down here. Yeah. No wild dogs. Now you got some wild pigs and boars stuff there. But we found some dead uh, something that killed two boars over here on the uh, gates. It's just what was left of the head and part of the body. I don't know what mm. killed them. But two big old boars, dude. Really? Yeah. And they wasn't shot. Something killed them. Yeah. Huh. So I'm on, I don't know if they're still over there. If they are, I could probably take you and see them. Show them. But you can come down here, and we'd park right in here, and right down off in there. I'm talking just like. Just like clockwork, man. Just like clockwork. <laughs> Around 11.30, 11.45 at night. Especially if there wasn't else in here. You come in here, and right down off in there, you start hearing what sounds like a dog bark. A mm. real deep, like, <laughs> like that. Right. And like, oh, wait a minute. And it would happen, I mean, literally clockwork, man. Between 11.30 and 11.45, it's like clockwork. Start hearing that dog bark. Like, Wait, but there ain't no dogs down here. There's nobody down here. And there's no wild dogs, and it always came from the valley right down there. And I had talked to other people, and they said, "Have you ever heard of what sounded like a dog barking down there?" I'm like, and I wouldn't bring it up. Like, yeah. Really? No, but they bring it right up. Yeah, it sounds like a dog barking. Really? Oh yeah. Hmm. Yeah. So that would go on, and it's as far as I know, it still goes on to this day. But also, you would hear what sounds basically just like this right here, and you hear it all the time. And it would always come from that area right there, here. Just like that. Clear as a bell, man. Mm. And that would go on and on for for a while, dude. And sometimes you'd hear it, I mean, just like, and the next one would be like, just like that, man. It was wow. rocks, rock on rock. And it was always coming from that area right down there. Yeah, and just mm. like what you just heard a while ago. Yeah. Yeah, you just heard a rock clap. Mm. But this, this area is highly active. Why, I don't know. It's a nice area. I mean, it's they got everything it needs, you know. Well, I, I talked to the lady. I won't give her a name because she said I, I'll do, I've never given her a name. She was with, I'm pretty sure that she used to be with the BFRO mm -hmm. back when they first started. And before they cut the trails in here, to open this thing up to like a campsite, they had been coming here doing research. And she said they would park up there. There was just enough to pull in. And she said they'd walk in here with their equipment. Mm -hmm. And she said right there in the middle section, she said they would set up chairs and put up like a big tarp and stuff like that, hide out. Well, she said, and she showed me pictures of this area. Before they came in here, man, there was tree structures. Oh, yeah. really? oh God, dude. Oh, yeah. And I found some myself out here like that. You'd find trees like, like, just say like, some this size, some that size, like three of these, and these things would be wrapped, wow, like, like a twisty tie, and then they'd be bent over, and the tops just drove slapped down on the ground. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. She showed me one, no lie. It was one about this big around, and it was completely twisted and twisted and twisted into like a knot, and then the top was brought over, it was bent down, but what was weird is before it drove the top into the ground, it twisted it again. Oh, wow. Yeah, and then it drove the top into the ground about yeah. that far. It just, I'd love yeah. to see the storm that could do that. Dude, you know what I mean? It's No, it wasn't no storm. Dude. Yeah. And she said yeah. what was weird about that, she said that this one they noticed that the way the park rangers would do. When they would report something like that, what they found, she said within two weeks they come back, that tree's gone, the area's cleared, mm. like it never existed. Oh, yeah, man. Huh. Oh, yeah. And, uh, <laughs> she also told me that um, back during that time, she said, find the tree structures. They they saw what what she calls is the screamer. 
was a female. And it makes me wonder. Now that was back in early 80s is when this happened. So, and what me and Ken, David, and my son saw right over here was a female. And it kind of makes me wonder if it ain't the same one. Yeah. She said they were set up in the middle section right there. And she said they had all their cameras set up and this, that, and the other. And then she said one night, excuse me, out of the blue, she said they heard what sounded like a woman scream, just bloody murder. And I've heard that several times myself there. Mm -hmm. I actually got done audio. And she said then it stopped. She said then it would get louder, then it would stop. It'd get louder, then it would stop. And she said then all of a sudden, she said they, and she said they actually have this on video. Mm -hmm. I said, really? She said, yeah. She said, we actually have it on video. They saw a creature, a female looking creature that had long shaggy looking hair. Not bulky like Patty, because like I said, the one we saw, she that she wasn't bulky like Patty. She was a yeah. tells a female. It came running from that direction. It ran right in between there. It came right in between here, because the, the gravel road went here. Then this is all wood. Right. It came right through there, ran right through there. See, she took off running. She went right down through there and ran slap off and then right back there behind it went over the hill. Wow. And they said the whole time she was running, they said that thing was screaming at the top oh, of the Oh, man, lines. that's creepy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so they call the screamer. Yeah. And it's weird because the way she described her is almost to the T to what we saw that night probably years was the, and years ago. Probably was the same. Yeah. And I asked her, I said, how could you tell the female? She said, could you see the breast on I said, really? She said, yeah, dude. She said, she, I said, how big was she? She said, she's probably about 6'5". The one me and him saw it, and I was about 6'5". Yeah. To the T, man. To the T, she described the exact same thing we saw that night, which that was back in the early 80s, man. So. Wow. Yeah, I mean, she said they've had a lot of stuff. You know, they found tree structures. They saw that. Um, I mean, they found footprints out here. She said, but every time they would report it. Gone. Yeah, but get gone, just like that. Huh. Report it to who? Uh, park rangers. Oh, okay. Yeah, about what they were finding. Yeah. Any kind of research, man. She said within two weeks, of like, them, when it, she, because she told me, she said, she showed me the picture where they actually found them trees, where they were twisted up real bad and buried. Yeah. She said, now here it is two weeks later. Oh, same yeah. area. <laughs> he showed me a video. Trees have been sawed down, like they never existed. Wow. And she's like, why would they take them out of here? Yeah, that doesn't nothing. make any sense. Yeah. That's right. That's yeah. Right. Huh. Yeah. Cool. Talk about that one too. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Let's take a walk up back to the car. So I want to see that print that you got. Okay. What are you saying? <laughs> things right over here. We're we'll gonna look at. Right oh yeah, 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 yeah. Forgot about that. Yeah, looks better on camera. Yeah, I can see it. <laughs> I can see it too. Oh, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, with her picture too. And then you know. <laughs> over here, there was some, um, looked like, looked like there was some tokens coming back this way. I saw them mm. all go. I don't know. I don't know where they were. Yeah. They were faint. <laughs> yeah. Alex. It's a good eye. Yeah, you got a good eye. <laughs> You're the footprint finder. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I would love to. Yeah, I didn't know that this was an option. Yeah. Yeah. This is. Um... Yeah, you let me know if you don't do it. I'll come and hang out with you. All right. I mean, this will be perfect. Yeah, maybe one of the nights that I'm here, we could just come down and just chill for for a little bit. Yeah. During the week, there's nobody. Yeah. Yeah. This is this is nice. Yeah. This is very secluded and remote. It's nice. Hmm. There's only like three other people other than you. Can I can I videotape this? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Put it down. Put it on the uh, the table over there.
Wow. <laughs> Jeez. That's huge. It is, dude. That's a big bull. They say he's, he's around nine foot. And it takes a lot of pressure <laughs> to put a track like that in the ground. Oh, man. It's, I mean, what else? There's nothing else that that could be. That's, that's, that's. It's yeah. massive, dude. And that's one of the best prints I've seen in a long time. I appreciate it. That's one I said I had to carry sucker out. Baby. Yeah, yeah, no kidding. This is this is a first generation. This is the this came out of the ground. Came out of the ground. Wow. Yeah, that's the original. That's a good casting too. You did a good job casting it. Yeah, it was hard, man. I'm telling you, it was hard. Yeah. Because like I said, we to get it out of the ground. I mean, we thought for sure it was gonna crack and break on us. Because it, I mean, it took so much plaster cast to get that thing done. Because it's like mix them and get you half a seal. It's like Jesus kept getting mixed. <laughs> keep mixing. Like, Jesus Christ, man. It took. Yeah. I mean, they're one pound bags. I mean, they're, yeah, they're one pound bags, and it took it took six 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 six, six pounds, pounds to cast that right there. Yeah. Jeez. And then, like I said, then when it came out of the ground, it was like that much mud on it. So mm -hmm. and again, that was like it was so. It's like oh, I, I mean, he's gonna crack. He's gonna break. And I, one <laughs> real another one. Yeah. <laughs> wow. I oh, like he's got his little indention and everything in there. Was, yeah. That's 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 I wild. Thought, I might be wrong, but I thought like a swirl there somebody said that one guy looked, he said thought there was a hair on there somewhere. Oh, there very well might be. I think there is. But I I've looked at this thing so many times it ain't funny, dude. Wow. Yeah, that's <laughs> Oh man. That's a big bull. <laughs> Thank you for showing me that. That's Oh no, that's you're wild. you're fine, dude, you're fine. Yeah, you're fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like I said, ain't just, just so many people's X X thing. Yeah. Wow. That's so cool. Tent. Oh no. So about like I said, it's been about maybe five, close to six years ago now. There was a gentleman down here who was leaving. Um he had left, I don't know if he left out of here or where he left at. But he was going back up. Um, he was going back up on 109. He said he came around a bend. And he said when he come around the curve, excuse me, he said this big black looking thing ran out front of his truck and he popped him. Oh. And he went to the side of his truck. Wow. He said, but just as soon as he knew when he hit it that it was walking like a man. He said it wasn't no bear. He said he hit it. He pulled over the side of the road. Said he got out with his flashlight. Said he got to looking, and he said the thing was, I don't know, maybe from here, maybe to the bench from him. Said and the thing was down like in a ditch, and he said it was sitting there and it was moving, kind of rolling around a little bit. Mm. He said he got looking. He's like, no, there ain't no bear. He said because it wasn't even built like a bear. He said then all of a sudden he said the thing just stood up like a man. He's like, oh God, what is that? That's exactly <laughs> what he talked. Well, what I talked to him. He's like, oh God, what is that? And he said it stood up. And he said when it stood up, he said it was, he said he had to be at least close to seven feet. He said he was he was tall. He said he wasn't real big though. He said, but it was completely covered in fur. Mm -hmm. He said when it stood up, he said it was kind of holding its side like this. Is what he said, because I saw it reach up. He said, I saw the hand come up and like hold itself like this. Yeah. He said, and it got up and it kind of stumbled walking off into the forest. He said, so I call Highway Patrol. He said, and I called a record service. He said, well, he said, the highway patrol comes out. He said, and I explained to him what happened. And he said, and the, the, the trooper kind of looked at me and said, what did you say? <laughs> he said, so I explained it to him again. He said, so it was a bear, right? And he said, I told him, he said, no. He said, this was not a bear. He's like, no, I'm pretty sure you hit a bear. And he said, no. He said, this was not a bear. He said, mm -hmm. this thing stood up like a man. And held its right arm and took off walking. He said, and Trip kind of stood and looked at him and said, "Hold on." He said, "Hold on. Let me go. Let me call a bit back." Said the trooper went back to his car. Was gone about 10, 15 minutes. Came back and he said, um, "There's going to be some people coming out here." He said, "Just wait on." He said about an hour went by. He said the record truck ain't even got here yet. Mm -hmm. He said about an hour went by. And I found this out through word of another guy where this had just happened because he called me the night after this thing happened he said man he said you hear about this and I was like no so he told me this who this guy was so I contacted the guy so about an hour goes by he said then all of a sudden he said two black vans 
pull up in this black car. He said, these guys get out, and I don't know if you want to call them, you know, the men in black or whatever. He said, got, they got in black suits. He said, they walk up to me. He said, they take me to the other side and come here and want to talk to you. He said, but what I noticed is they're talking to me. He said, the van door's open. He said, and these guys are getting out. He said, they're putting on these suits. And he said, and they got like, just like, he said, it's like machine guns. Mm. He said, and they take off walking in the forest. Hmm. He said, so they go over there and they take me to the side. And he said, they're standing there talking to me. And uh, he said, they're, you know, they're going through the whole spiel about what happened. And he said, and the first thing that came out of the guy's mouth is, he said, you hit a bear. And he said, no. He said, it wasn't a bear. And he said, no. You hit a bear. You hit a bear. Yeah. And he said, he told him, he said, no, I did not. He said, sir, he said, you hit a bear. That's the end of it. Mm -hmm. And he's like, well, no, it's not the end of it. And he said, the guy was like, no, that is the end of it. You hit a bear. Yeah. He said, well, he said, uh, he started talking. He said, the guy started talking to me probably 10, 15 minutes. He said, the next thing he heard was gunfire coming out of the forest. Oh, wow. He said, then, he said, the guy told him, he said, you just stand right here. He said, he walked back over to his van, well, over to the van, the other cars. He said, and the uh, the guys finally came back out of the forest. He said, they opened the back doors again. He said, they took off their suits. They threw the guns up in there. He said, then they pulled out this great big long sheet looking thing. Mm -hmm. He said, like this big old gurney looking thing. He said, they took off in the woods with it. Hmm. He said, so he never saw what they come out with. Yeah. He said, but the guy come back up to him and told him, he said, you're free to go. He said, and remember, you hit a bear. Wow. He said, but here's the thing. So he told me all that. So what I did, <laughs> just to be, you know, trying to find out, you know, if everything was kosher, I said, all right. I said, well, I'm going to call the Highway Patrol. So I called the Highway Patrol, and this girl answered the phone. Mm -hmm. And I told her, I said, I have that question. I said, there was an incident that happened on 109. Like I said, this probably been at least six years ago. I said, there's an incident that happened back on 109 where a gentleman thought he had hit a bear. And he didn't. He hit something else. It was black walking upright. Yeah. And I said, I'm just curious, you know, if I could maybe get some information or something. I'm trying to do a story on it. And she went, Well, how did you how did you how did you hear about this? And I said, Well, I heard it from the from the guy that happened to him. And yeah. She's like, Nothing happened. And I was like, Yeah, it did. And she's <laughs> like, No, nothing happened. I said, Yeah, it did. So I've talked to the gentleman. And I said, mm -hmm. I've seen everything. Yeah. And she goes, no, Hold on. So she put me on hold. After about five minutes, this guy comes on the phone. He goes, can I help you? And I told him the exact same thing. And he goes, well, how did you know about this? And I said, the guy told me. He goes, but how did you get information about this? He said, well, nothing's been reported. He says, how did you know about this? Mm. I said, so you're saying it happened. He said, no, I'm asking you, how did you know about this? I said, so you're telling me that it happened. Mm. He said, he hit a bear. Click. <laughs> wow. Really <laughs> I mean, I didn't say nothing more he hit. First thing he said, he hit a bear. Click, Click. hung up on me. Wow. Yeah.